he just learned so quick. I went way ahead, gave him the test early, and uh, he passed. So congratulations. Thanks, it's the fastest sir. I've ever given a blue belt, but it's well earned. Hello, hello. Hey, how you doing, guys? Not just another pretty face. It's Derek Moneybird in the home of Jake Shields. Um, Jake and I have been working on some construction. We've been working on <laughs> You're going to be construction, construction manager. Yeah, all kinds of, uh, I've learned things in the uh, construction industry. How yeah. to be a foreman. You're going to be a construction manager by the time you leave here. Um, also, uh, playing around with live jujitsu last night, a bit today, and um, yeah, that's going well. Yeah, I had a really big day today. Um, gave him his blue belt test, which uh, generally get a blue belt, just the hardest martial art to get it. Usually takes two to three years, but he was advancing so fast uh, with his hard dedication, you know, five, four hours a day, uh, fast learning, great coaches as well. Best coaches. He, yeah, he, he just learned so quick. I went way ahead, gave him the test early, and uh, he passed. So congratulations. Thanks, it's the fastest sir. I've ever given a blue belt, but it's well earned. So no, Jake's mentioned that to me. So this, this uh, we did, my first day of jujitsu training with him, ever, ever, was with him on November 22nd. And he, I remember November 22nd, because that's the day that my, the last day that my Adam's apple felt normal again. Yeah. <laughs> Jake put me in a guillotine choke that I should have tapped from sooner. But hey, it's just evolving so quick that it wouldn't be fair not to give it. It's like when people come in, after a couple months, you come in and guys have started thinking, you're not really a white belt. They started choosing you a sandbag and so they got to the point where I kind of uh, had to promote them. <laughs> um, I appreciate that. And I think Anthony Smith still thinks I'm lying to him that he asked me about, you know, when did you first start training? And I'm like, you know, at the time that he was here, I think that was in April. And I'm like, oh, just a few months ago. And he, like, he literally thinks I'm like lying to him or with him. That, that wasn't true. But um, Jake's been my main coach. Jake is, uh, he's been my, my first MMA coach. He's been with me consistently um, every four weeks for, you know, many hours. Um, and then, you know, as you've seen, I had other coaches that, that came in came and went or some of them come back, you know, quarterly or three, four times a year, they're gonna, but uh, Jay's been my main coach and the guy that I think of as uh, you know, my, my primary, he's the guy. So you helped me tie a lot of pieces together from other people. You taught me so much yourself and I'm excited to keep going and learn a lot more. Yeah, thank you. And again, you know, like you said, you got this so quick, but how, how much hard work did you put in and how much thought about, I mean, you put quite of a, I saw you put quite a, quite a bit of work into it. In, in the last, you were, it was 25 days between us training together in, in the last 25 yeah. days. And in the last 25 days alone, and I, I have a schedule in the other room that I'm actually going to frame at the end of the year because it looks ridiculous yeah. of the people that I trained <laughs> with. But in the last 25 days, you, you left and then Gilbert Burns came over for four days and we worked out maybe 12 hours or so. And then we took Gilbert to the airport and dropped him off and picked up Frank Near and then we worked out for a few days together three more days. So in, in that time, I put in about 32 hours with you, Gilbert, and Frank uh, in 10, well, I worked for 10 days out of 11, put in about 32 hours just yeah. in that window. And then I was working with Rich Franklin since then, he came over for uh, a couple days. And then I had uh, my boxing, you know, with Bo Pauly, but and then I also had, Hoyce uh, Gracie was with me for the past week. So, um, you know, Hoyce gave me that nod as well, and we, you know, he was one of my guest speakers yeah. at my event. So, you know, when you have when you have greats like Hoyce Gracie, Gilbert Burns, these guys saying you're you're definitely need to get the belt. It's time to do it. Another thing is too, this whole time you were also training MMA and boxing, not just jujitsu. So that makes it even uh, more impressive. You know, you know, and and a little kickboxing and construction <laughs> and, <laughs> and stock and market and, and run your business and do live events and and and. So, um, I think something that you and I, you know. It's not, I think, I'm, I'm certain that something you and I both shared in common is that we're, we're pretty good at uh, utilizing the hours in our day that a lot of people say, oh, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. Well, I don't have time for a lot of shit, but there's also that you, you organize your time. You, you get to vote on what your priorities are by how you spend your time, you know? Yeah, a lot of people say they have no time and then they go and, you know, watch like four hours TV at night, mm -hmm. five hours TV at night, stuff like that. It's like, if you have time for that, you have time. Play on the internet a lot. Exactly. Play video games, play on the internet. There's all kinds of things. And it's fine to do that stuff occasionally, especially if you're being successful and getting your work done. But if you're not, then you probably should skip those things. Yes, I, I th you're going to vote with your time. Everybody gets 168 hours in the week. And, you know, winners and losers, rich people, poor people, smart people, dumb people. Everybody gets 168 hours. And you know, the, the people that manage that the best and do so consistently are going to have, you know, consistently better outcomes. There's no, nothing mystical or magical about that, that if you're substituting the leisure before you should, or 
you know, video games or weed smoking or whatever, whatever dumb people do, probably you don't do that or you wouldn't be here, but you know, you're not going to have the best outcomes that you could. Um, just look, look in the mirror and blame yourself when you don't have the shit you want in life. Yeah, when I was at the point in my career when I was fighting for world titles, I didn't, uh, I didn't have a TV, didn't have internet at my house. It was just, I didn't have time for that stuff. So, I, you know, I didn't, didn't follow the news, didn't follow politics. That stuff wasn't important. You know, now I still work hard, but can work a little less hard. I have time to do that stuff. But when you're really focused, that's where your energy has to be. Have you ever seen the TV on here? No. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, actually, if I was thinking about it, no, I, I watched yeah, a couple of fights. We watched fights one time, that was it. We watched fights in, that, that we were in time, Vegas once. Time, yeah. We had some fights together. And I, I don't recall, maybe we watched fights here one time. Maybe we watched fights here one time. But I, I seldom turn on the television at all. The, sometimes it would, it would go weeks and the television never went on. Or I also sometimes turn it on in the background like a documentary and like work on my computer. Exactly. If I have like, you know, I don't have to be ultra focused on what I'm doing. Um, you know, I can work on my computer and, and put like a documentary in the background and I'm still learning something halfway in the background. But um, I don't know, yeah, I, I've, I've had a strong bias towards, you know, creating more productivity and creating more value. And I know you lived your life that way. I, I asked you a long time ago, uh, you know, there's a time in your career Jake is a you know, world champion five times in MMA. And at one time he had, you know, 15 fight win streak, I mean, almost seven years long. I remember asking you, uh, you know, what, what was your life like during that time? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much like I said, that, that was a time period, you know, where I had no TV, didn't pay attention to what was gone. It's all I did was train. I think that in that win streak, I think I'd be five UFC champs as well. So it wasn't, it wasn't fighting nobody's, or no, at least four UFC champs in that, uh, in that win streak. I know Tyrone Woodley, Dan Henderson, uh, Carlos Condon. Carlos. There was uh, Dave Manet, who was an like old-time UFC champ, but I beat him when he was still, you know, tough. Henderson, so. Dan Henderson's you know, Hall of Fame, tough guy, gangster, great, good man, too. Um, something you told me during that time, and I asked about your, you know, your habits, behavioral habits, how you spent your time. I remember you saying that, um, you know, if you won a fight on Saturday, that a lot of guys would take a month off to go around for a month. And you said, well, if I win a fight on Saturday, I might travel Sunday and relax uh, half of the day, and Monday back to the gym, back to training. Yeah, I used to be back. Everyone's always so shocked that I was back in their training the next day. And obviously, you know, it used to take a couple weeks, light, just kind of goofing off, but just still still in there watching it, absorbing it. You know, if, if I was banged up from the fight, I would come in and watch it and coach my teammates. If I was healthy, I'd come in and train. People were always like, man, how it's, it's crazy you're coming in like this, but it's... Uh, how most of my team was, you know, I was good with guys like Nick Diaz, Nate Diaz, these guys, you know, get great by having a hard work ethic. You know, you've been close with those guys 20 years, more than 20 years, some of them, huh? Yeah, over 20 years from Gilbert, now. Gilbert Melendez and Nick and Nate Diaz. What is the value of having high quality training partners or coaches through your career? How did that, how did that help you? It was absolutely crucial because you're surrounded by a network. You know, we had four people, we all came up together, all completely unknown. No one's, it was, I guess, just chance. We all came to the same gym at the same time, but we all had to set that we're going to be the, be the best. And seeing other people that way, it made us, we didn't want to disappoint each other. So none of, we would always show up for each other. We would always, uh, like, if I didn't feel like going to the gym, I couldn't miss because Nick was going to, Nick was going to be there. That would be an uh, embarrassment to my teammates. So having uh, teammates or coaches to hold you accountable is, uh, is absolutely important. You have to you have to have one or the other. Either an important coach to, hold, to uh, keep you accountable, or some really really uh, good teammates. I got lucky with you know the, I said the guys were completely unknown at the time, but all we all ended up becoming world champions. I run these programs that way, and you're 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 familiar with some of my systems here. That uh, this is we're in week two of our real estate course. So when you were last year, are you working on the markets mastery course yet? Now we're talking about real estate, and uh, I'll go answer the questions about real estate in a few minutes, but. To even get in the, the course. Well, it came up in a conference room the other day. I had, um, I remember Valentina was over. I think Valentina Shevchenko was over at the time. I mean, it might have been uh, when Henry Cejudo was there. But during that day, somebody asked about uh, you know, how, how to be, you know, what have those guys done to be in the room? Well, they've gone through about six interviews or screening process to be in that room yeah. with me, with those people. They've gone through, you know, jumped through about at least six hoops or, you know, clear screening processes that they belong there. They're not going to say something fucked up. They're not going to do something fucked up. That uh, they're going to they're intelligent enough to contribute to the room. They've been through the three courses. And there'll be you know some people here that maybe they're taking their first course. A lot of people here they've gone through all three courses or they're on their third course or 
we have an observer spot that I've told you before that when they come through as a client for all three courses that I allow them to take them a second time for, for no charge. I hate the word free. Yeah. I hate the word free. So they don't get to do it for free, but yeah. they don't, but they don't no have charge. to pay anything. <laughs> There's no charge. There's no charge to take them the second time. Those are people that already showed a level of dedication themselves, that they're, they were serious, they showed up, they're learning something, they're going to go do something, going to go be somebody. And um, you, know, you, you, don't, you don't want the wrong people on your team. You don't want the wrong people in the environment. It's, it's a pollution. Yeah, we would kick out bad people. Sometimes, you know, they might even be in the UFC, but if they're bringing toxic, uh, toxic personality there, we kick them out. You got to cut those people out. Hey, I, I appreciate you making time to, to come train with me as much as you have, and um, I'm excited to keep working and uh, we'll go play around. Jake, Jake it's, uh, we go back and forth uh, on this, not in, a, not in a conversation, but Jake was always teaching me some high-level black belt shit, in, uh, which I do okay at absorbing. Yes. But then I'm like, you know, okay, can we, let's focus on the, what are the, what are the things that I need for the next belt? Yeah, I'm used to training top pros. So we went right, right, right into the, uh, the most elite current stuff I'm doing. And I'm thinking like, all right, maybe we should go back and, uh, and work with some, some of the uh, beginner stuff. So, uh, probably for a month, we'll go work on some more high level black belt stuff. And uh, then my brain will get focused. It's like, what exactly do I need to know to, to be on track for my purple belt uh, sometime next year? So it won't be this year, but sometime next year, I'd like to get focused on that too. So um, um, I appreciate you taking time to you know to come train with me. I learned a lot of things from you. That, I learned a lot of things from a lot of guys, but um, you know you're the guy that helps me tie all those things together. I learned a lot of things and you know foundational things from you, and uh, you know I appreciate your your coaching and guidance Thank and you. mentorship in in this area that uh, you literally couldn't find a better coach. That you know when Jake's time at UFC there was. Uh, well, you, know, they, you and Damian Maya were you and Damian Maya were considered like the two, two best, know, yeah, the best guys. best jujitsu guys. And uh, I'll tell a story that that Henry Hoof told me. Henry Hoof's a legendary kickboxer, and he's a, a head coach down at Sanford MMA down in Florida. And Henry told me that he was your coach during that that fight down in Brazil. Yeah. Yep. So Jake's fighting Damian Maya in, in Brazil. It's like the two best jujitsu guys at the UFC at the time fighting each other. Damien's from Brazil, uh, so they're fighting in his his home territory. And there's a chant there, and I don't know the Brazilian words. You you will die, they chant. <laughs> yeah. So in, in their language, they, they chant uh, to the uh, the visiting opponent that, you know, you, you will die, you will die. <laughs> and um, so Henry tells me that they're, you know, they have the traditional chant to, to welcome you, you know, you yeah, will die, exactly. you will die, you will die. And so it's quite loud. They're you know stomping around and making a, it's quite a, a loud environment. And um, I watched that fight recently because part, and partially because Henry told me the story. So I watched that fight and you know watched your performance and uh, saw Henry in the corner there. So when uh, at the end of the fight, when when Jake gets his hand raised, then uh, you know, Henry says the the, the stadium goes you know, silent. The, there's no more. You will die. They're just yeah. like. All right, so shut the Brazilian crowd up. Hard to do, yeah. Yes. Not, not easy. So, uh, you know, during Jake's time there, you know, there, he and he and Damian Meyer were, you know, widely considered the two best jiu-jitsu guys, and he won that fight, you know, in Brazil in Damian Maia's home community, and um, you know, a lot of people think you're the, you know, the best jiu-jitsu guy, you know, for, you know, from UFC, and there's and you still train with the other best jiu-jitsu guys yeah. from UFC today. So, so yeah, still always learning. Yeah. So. And, and that's worth mentioning while you're here is that, you know, that, that continuous learning. I had, I had um, Carla Esparza made this point this week. Carla was a, a guest at one of my events. She brought her belt with her. That was fun. So yeah. we're sitting in the audience with her, you know, big heavy, you know, 15-pound or so UFC belt next to us. And I asked Carla, you know, how many coaches do you have uh, to, you know, right now to help you get that belt? And she, she named off six, like boom, 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 boom. And probably a couple more on the periphery, you know. Yeah. And this this is idiocy out there that like is, is if you would if you accomplish something like you're done learning or you made it or you did it, and I, and some you know it's nice to celebrate landmarks or milestones, mm-hmm. but I want to learn things until I'm dead. In a lot of times in your spare time, I don't mean to monopolize the conversation, but in a lot of times in your spare time, I see you you're still watching jujitsu and you're still practicing jujitsu with the, the best guys in the world. Yeah, all industries and professions are uh, constantly changing and getting better. So if you're not following and keeping up with current times, you're getting worse. You see guys, they're an expert, you know, and then five years later, they're not. 
and that's a it's a poor mistake a lot of people make. So I've made a, a, a habit out of learning for forever. It is, as long as um, you know, through my teenage years, I was actively you know trying to learn aggressively, trying to do more than others were doing in my in my peer group, and uh, I've done that my whole life. And it's turned out quite well. And you know, you're doing that in the areas that are the most exciting and interesting to you. And it's turned out quite well. I think a person that does it, if you if you think you made it, you go, oh, I, you know, I took the real estate riches course. Now I know everything about real estate. Well, I'm still learning more about real estate. Uh, you know, Sam Zell is worth maybe six, seven billion dollars and you know, pushing 80 years old. He's still learning about real estate. You know, he's kind of the grandfather of commercial real estate. He's like the OG commercial real estate guy. He's still learning about real estate. So you're, you're going to be learning for your whole lifetime, or you're going to be falling behind. This gives you a great foundation. You're going to be learning for your whole lifetime, or you're going to be falling behind. And it's not enough to just know about real estate. You, you also need to understand entrepreneurship. You need to ho- know how to run an effective business uh, so you have efficiencies in your real estate portfolio as well and have additional income coming in to, to fund more real estate. You also have to know about the stock market. There's, there's times that you'd be advantaged to have your, your cash or your, your net worth tied up in stocks more so than real estate. But you're going to want to, you want an income from all three of those sources. You want entrepreneurial income. You want enough entrepreneurial income that you don't have time to show up for a job. It wouldn't make sense. You want enough entrepreneurial income that you know you're, you're not spending all of it, but you can start investing that, you know, in stocks and real estate. And you know, there'll be a point in your future you have enough income from your from stocks from real estate that uh, you wouldn't have time for any sort of entrepreneurship that's not fun for you, that's not exciting for you. And you know, you see me work a lot of hours, but I, I generally enjoy most of the things that I'm doing. And the other ones I'm actively weeding out, but I'm not going to be doing that shit yeah. in the future. It's great when you can pick pick and choose the work and job you do, that situation you want to be in. So, again, Jake, thanks for spending your time. Thanks so I appreciate much. Appreciate your you guidance. Guys. Thanks for seeing a few words with the folks here. I'm going to answer your questions about real estate, and we'll get back to training right. about yeah. six o'clock. I was living on my coach's uh, living room on a mattress, you know. I ended up like just bouncing at a bar. I'd been a cop, I quit my job. And- Derek Moneybird presents the 10 Commandments of Wealth. Took, took the gamble on myself to become a successful uh, professional fighter and make it to the UFC or pride in that time. And- am I making a sacrifice right now or am I just in- investing in a better future? So it's easier for me to do those, to make those decisions when I think about it is like, oh, yeah, absolutely. I, and, I, and now that you mention it, having to actually really process and think about it. I think that word sacrifice is kind of like, I believe it's the word that the ones at the top kind of use to make everyone else feel better about it. Because when you're at the top, now you realize that that was an investment. Was everything just golden and easy and handed to you or do you have a little struggle with yourself along the way? No. Yeah, within, uh, in 2013 and 2015, I was living out of my car, you know, full time. And I was too proud to ask for help. Like, how ridiculous is that? You're living out of your car and you think you know it all. And 2015, that's when I kind of hit, I knew that I didn't know it all. So why not find experts in that and really shortcut that? I thought I was going to just chip away. I thought I was just going to read books till I was an expert. Mm-hmm. I never really talked to anyone that actually did it. It's been about a week since I've joined the 10 Commandments of Wealth program, and there's so many interviews that are offered in this program. I'm inside the Derek Moneybird 10 Commandments of Wealth program. This is an awesome program that you're gonna love. I'm gonna use the principles and the knowledge from this program to help me boost my leads in my marketing firm. Buy this program, it's a wonderful investment for your future. You won't regret it, and you'll absolutely love it.